Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Friday edition of On the Box. We're moving in. We got Zoomage. I like that. Zoomage. <laughs> What Muppet did you remind me of then? I don't, I don't know. It was. it was pretty I don't know. powerful. And we were a little late because the top of Mark's head got cut off, yeah. and it was painful, and we had to put it on again. And all of that intellect was just oozing out. We had to clean yeah. up the floor. Yeah. It was a mess. Mark, you feeling okay? Yes. <laughs> No, it's still looks cut look, off. Is it me or does he look a little green? The interlakes looks cut off. Yeah. That so. does look green. Huh? It's not easy <laughs> being green, as one Muppet used to say. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yes. So what are you doing today, Ray? Um, I'm on the box. I just finished a new book. You got so it. Um, you did. It's, yeah, finished it. Finished so it. It's off my plate. Finished it. And do you have any idea what number that is? N yeah, it's 180. That's the name of the book. Is that your 180th book as I well? No, it's not. It's probably no, close, no, right? It's not. Have you broke 100 yet? No, not yet. 70? <laughs> no, yes, 80? Yes. 80, 90? It's 95, somewhere, somewhere between. Really? Yeah. Wow. So now, Mark, when are you going to write a book? Uh, I guess you when I should write a to book. Say. Uh, Wait, Mark, you got lots to say. Yeah. Well, if you, if you could write a book today, what, what would, what's the first subject that comes to mind that you would like to write? Evangelism. Evan <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Ray's already covering that, so I, I don't really have All right, so what would be your second choice? Probably, uh... How I hate being asked dumb questions. Evangelism. Thank you for calling my question <laughs> dumb. <laughs> now, I would never call you dumb, Ray, because no, I have, I have too much... At, you uh, would laugh at dumb things that I do, wouldn't you? Yes, and we're going to show one right now. Oh, really? No, we're not. Danny says we're not. <laughs> tease! That was a tease! <laughs> now we are! Yes, we are. Double-minded man. What's next? Oh, hey, we're going to give a scholarship away today. Um, Joshua from Bremerton, Washington, sent me an email. He said, thanks for your ministry. It's been a true blessing. Though I can't afford it at the moment to take the School of Biblical Evangelism training course, I have watched every episode of On the Box. He's the one. Every episode. And uh, every Ray Comfort, Tony Miano, Mark Spence, Easy Swain, and Ambassadors Alliance video I can find. Uh, they motivated me to go out uh, to some local fairs and festivals and hand out millions and trillions uh, gospel tracts. This was the... Ray, I'm sorry, Ray. You're right in front of the camera. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Live broadcast and all. Uh, <laughs> this... This was the first time. Hi, Ray. Ray. This, this was the first time I or anyone I knew had done something like this. Welcome to On the Box. Ah, uh, it's live. Okay, back to Joshua. I couldn't find anyone to go with me so I went out alone if you think for a moment that was planned that was not planned that was vintage Ray Comfort right there <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna throw up that segment up on throw up that segment <laughs> 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 We're live, Mark. We're live. Oh, oh boy, this place is chaos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is color television. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's a set. <laughs> <laughs> you think we better cut to an advertisement or something? <laughs> it's a. It's actually a sad day here at Living Waters because we're losing one of our own. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you going to talk about losing Lisa now? She's upstairs <laughs> watching, and I'm laughing about her leaving. <laughs> Okay. We have 
We have the best family here at Living Waters. Mm -hmm. Our CSRs, everybody, just great here at the ministry. And uh, mm -hmm. Lisa Law. I've got tear, tears in my eyes <laughs> from Lisa leaving. I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> you have a headache. <laughs> I think I broke something. <laughs> Lisa, uh. Lisa I, I'm not sure how long Lisa's been with us, but she's been a, a three years. Mm -hmm. Daniel says three years. She's been a stabilizing force up there in the mayhem. Uh, do we call it the bullpen? What do we call it up there? At the, this, we need to. We're, we now call it the bullpen <laughs> up there oh, where the CSR. I'm sure the ladies will be really <laughs> pleased. <laughs> oh boy, we're going to get some complaints for that one. <laughs> Chicken coop? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lisa's leaving, and we're having, we're we're having a nice party. And we're all broken up about it. <laughs> we're, ha we're having a party upstairs. We are. Because she's, well. she's leaving. Yes, yeah, Lisa's leaving today. She's going to be getting married soon. Mm -hmm, to her uh, fiancé. To her fiancé, <laughs> <laughs> who's not a bull. <laughs> and uh, I haven't met him yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still holding that against Lisa. She hasn't let me meet the the guy yet. But uh, And then she's uh, moving on to serve in an administrative capacity at her church which is a really neat thing. And, and when uh, I walked in yesterday on that thing that you brought up. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about this. I thought it was audio. I didn't know. Oh, no. You're talk I'm talking about what you did as soon as oh, you went upstairs. I did, I did the train wreck continued as soon as you went upstairs. You want to tell everybody what you did upstairs? <laughs> yeah, I walked up to Lisa and says they're giving you a party and you're leaving and it was a surprise party. Not anymore. And <laughs> about 300 daggers got thrown at me by the staff, but they laughed. Uh, so anyway, I thought the, or the thought on the box yesterday was just audio, yeah. and, I, and when I, I was quite surprised when I turned around and saw a camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so anyway, so Lisa, we love you very, very much. You've been a blessing to this ministry, and uh, we are going to miss you a great deal. Is she watching? Uh, uh, well, no. She's, well, she's, eat, she's all eating upstairs. She could be. Yeah, she's probably eating, but she can watch it on YouTube later. But anyways, hmm. so. Uh, best wishes to you and uh, your soon-to-be husband and uh, what the Lord's going to do uh, through you as you serve at your church. But you will be missed here, young lady. Mm. So there. All right. Let's get to a question. Wait. I, okay. I'm, I'm not going to ask this first question this first. It's pretty serious. Yeah, it? it's oh, way too serious. So suicide. I can't ask the second one either. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what about what we did yesterday? What did we? Oh, we go ahead. We went to uh, Sarita's College yeah. and preached open air and it was... Uh, a unique time. No hecklers, but we held a crowd. It was like church. It was like church. We had about 70 people. I took the time to count them. And uh, mostly non-Christians. And they stood there and listened for about 40 minutes. Yeah. And Tony, I, he was in teaching mode. It wasn't preaching. It was. I just thought, Tony sounds different. And it's because these people were listening intently. And I got up and thanked them for listening. And it was. they came up yeah. afterwards and asked questions. Scotty so preached too. Scotty yeah. preached too. And he had a, uh, he's got a great bedside man. He's like a doctor the way he preaches. Just yeah. He just sounds really nice. Dr. Scotty. Dr. Scotty. And you sound like a police officer. And I don't know what I sound like. You but sound it was like Ray Comfort. Oh, was kind. That was yeah. uh, it was a it was a very good time. And Kirk was. Kirk was there, Kirk and, was there and, and he really enjoyed it. Yeah, seemed to be real encouraged. Yes, so it was neat. And there were a number of Christians out there, uh, students on campus, who were also encouraged to hear preaching on their campus. So yes. yeah, it was a good time. All right, all right. We do want to calm down. We do want to get serious. The grown up is in the house, and he's looking at the clock. Oh, he left. Oh, he gone. Oh, okay. We he's got all gone? the time we want. Then all right. <laughs> Okay, now this is all right. All right, no more joking around for a little bit here. This is real serious. Yeah, just don't say things like that. Just carry on. Okay, uh, my close friend is contemplating contemplating suicide after being repeatedly rejected by society. Not sure what that means. Uh, what do I say to my friend to share with him the biblical consequences of suicide? Ray. It could be he's living a lifestyle that society doesn't accept. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand. It's, it's the it, rejected, by of being society. rejected by society. Don't know what that but means. But rejection is a, a really subtle thing that can destroy you. Um, I heard something years ago, and I've I've retained it. It's it's a downward path that you find yourself on if you get hurt by someone. It goes like this: hurt, rejection, self pity, resentment, anger, bitterness, hatred, suicide. Hmm. And it's all you. you it, he really hurt me. And so we're justified in, in getting a sense, feeling a sense of rejection, which makes us a little bitter towards that person. That bitterness grows, and it, it becomes hatred. It brings with it depression and then suicide. And you can see it happen in the, in the scriptures. If you follow the life of King Saul, he felt rejected. He felt hurt by his people. Saul is slain as thousands, David 10,000. So he felt rejected. 
And then he ga became bitter and he got deep depression and he eventually committed suicide. So it's something you need to shake off. But this person, you need to go for the root cause and the root cause is their sin. So you need to witness to them and get the fear of God in their heart and uh, make them realize they've sinned against God and, and get converted, get saved. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, boy, suicide, <coughs> it's such a uh, sensitive issue, uh, you know, isn't it? I, uh, it's, it's, it's not the unpardonable sin. Um, it's forgivable. You know, murder obviously is wrong, and self-murder is, uh, is just as wrong. However, we don't have the right to take, you know, our own lives. You know, that, that belongs to God. Uh, my, my, my advice to anybody who's even contemplated something like that would be to, uh, to get serious with the pastor, to perhaps for the first time be open and relatable inside their lives with an individual inside their lives. You know, get, get accountable. Um, any advice that I would have, I mean, I remember one time I, was, uh, I got this phone call as a pastor saying, hey, can you go talk to my, my nephew? Uh, he's suicidal right now and he's not listening to anybody. And it was like two o'clock in the morning, I went out there and I was trying to plead with him and he was kind of beside himself. And I said, sir, do not do this. Do not do this. And he, he wanted to be left alone and there was nothing I could do and he ran away from me and uh, I, I didn't know where he was at. I, I couldn't keep up with him. And I just remember yelling, you know, sir, if you do this, you're probably going to go to hell. You're probably going to go to hell if you commit suicide. Now, I don't believe if you commit suicide, you automatically go to hell. I believe all of our sins, past, present, future, are dealt with on the cross 2,000 years ago. Um, however, with that said, there's something wrong. There's something amiss. There's, there's something happens to an individual who says, um, man, I, I, I don't understand what's going on, and it's, everything's so confusing. I'm just going to get rid of all my fears, not realizing, not understanding that the problems just began for the friends and family of those who have been left behind. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's an extremely, it's the most selfish yeah. act an individual can commit. They have no idea the repercussions that are left, left behind. Yeah. So my advice is if somebody's really in that state to contact a pastor. If that pastor doesn't give you good advice, go to another pastor and then go to another pastor. Uh, there is help out there. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Uh, there, there are certain uh, churches that say uh, suicide is an automatic ticket to hell because it's, it's, a, it's a violation. It's not true. And, and in Three, I think there's three instances in scripture of people committing suicide and each time the Bible is silent on the morality of it and I think we should be the same because I thought of this scenario if you think suicide is an automatic ticket to hell think of those who stood on the tra World Trade Center a hundred stories up and they're on fire and they actually leap to their deaths they take it, make, make a choice to take their own lives because their flesh is burning on their back they took a step forward they actually committed suicide so no one would dare say you're going to hell because you lean forward to avoid being burned to death. It's a crazy thought, and I think it's something we should be very careful of when we speak. Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor John Piper uh, preached a, a wonderful message at the funeral service of a teenage boy in his congregation who committed suicide. Mm. And what a tough uh, responsibility that would be. But he, he used this analogy uh, to address those who think that suicide is an automatic ticket to hell, and none of us believe that as has already been expressed. But he said, what if I, as a Christian, what if I get into an argument with my wife? I'm angry. I say things I ought not say. I get into the car. I screech the tires. I'm, I'm driving mad. I, I roll through a stop sign. I get plowed and I die. Hmm. I've got unrepented sin in my heart. Am I going to hell? Hmm. If you're a genuine follower of Christ, the answer is no. Hmm. The answer is no, because we are, we are saved not by what we do. We are saved not by keeping the law. We are saved not by living perfect lives. We are saved by the grace of God alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Uh, I've, you know, as a deputy sheriff and as a chaplain, uh, I was uh, uh, part of the aftermath of way too many suicides. In fact, this is a statistic I think a lot of people don't know. Uh, every 57 hours, or uh, maybe even a little less now, uh, someone in the law enforcement community is killed in the line of duty. Wow. Three times that number that we know of commit suicide every year. In the law enforcement? In the law enforcement community, <coughs> men and women yeah. behind the badge. <coughs> and, uh, you know, if you're, 
something important to know is you're not going to ever talk someone into suicide by asking them if they are contemplating suicide. Mm. You will not talk <coughs> them into that. In fact, you may actually stop them from doing it by acknowledging the fact that you're concerned and you're wondering if they're thinking these things. If your friend is actually talking to you that they are contemplating committing suicide, that is great. That's wonderful. Mm. Uh, because those who go as far as to formulate a plan, and there is a difference between ideation, thinking about suicide, and actually formulating a plan, um, if, if they are opening up to you and talking to you about it, uh, the likelihood is that they have not come up with a plan. They're only thinking about it, because mm. usually when they get to the point of <coughs> planning the act, uh, no one around them knows. And so intervene. Get them whatever help they need. Uh, as Mark said, uh, get them to a pastor, uh, uh, certainly a biblical pastor. Talk to them about it and uh, do whatever you can. Most importantly, though, as, as you said to start, the question, Ray, is share the gospel with them. Yeah, Absolutely. And, uh, and what seems like a mountain some nights in the morning can seem like a molehill. That's right. Really God's like mercies are new every morning. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, next one is, I'm considering becoming Catholic, but have heard from others <laughs> that there's no biblical basis for purgatory. If that is true, where would they have gotten that belief from? Same place they got a lot of their other beliefs. They're just, they're tra mind. tradition. Yeah, tradition. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very important. Does this person say, I think I'm becoming a Catholic? Yes. Are they, they, a need, they then need obviously saved. not a Christian. They need to get saved. <coughs> you know, there's, there's a huge difference between Catholic and Christian. And the way to find out is to ask a Catholic, are you a Christian? And they'll say, no, I'm a Catholic. I ha happened this morning on the way to the ministry and I was riding on a bike. I saw a couple sitting in a bus stop. So I stopped, gave them a tract. I says, you guys Christians? And they said, no, we're Catholics. So Catholics know the difference between Catholic and Christian. It seems that many other people don't, but Catholics do. Christians believe something different about salvation than Catholics. Christians believe that salvation is by faith alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. Catholics believe that you have to do something to earn everlasting life. And you can't do anything to bribe the judge of the universe. So if this person's not a Christian that you're writing to us, just get saved and you'll know the truth. Yeah. The truth will make you free and you won't need to go to any church or become anything because you know the Lord. Right. Yes, uh, ultimately you need to repent. You need to turn from your sin and put your trust in Christ alone to save you. Uh, going to a Catholic church or any other church will no more make you right with God than going to in and out makes you I double knew double. That was you knew coming. it was coming. <laughs> you knew it was coming. That's the one that we hear at Sarita's yes. College. And there's a big sign right behind where we treat, preach something sponsored by in and out I oh, saw the sign really? when you're preaching. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe salivate. Uh, the Catholic church preaches a different gospel. Mm -hmm. um, and, <coughs> uh, and you can't be saved by a gospel you do not no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think this person was in the chat room and there were a number of, of our brothers and sisters in Christ who were sharing the gospel witnessing to this person in the chat room. So, yeah. Uh, Mark, anything you want to add to that one? No, I mean, if you, if you look at a purgatory, it really makes no sense from a biblical standpoint. If Jesus Christ really accomplished all, if he really paid the price in full, if it was truly done at the cross and we see that God accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, uh, we see that he accepted it by raising Christ again from the dead. There's no point for a purgatory. You cannot uh, do anything to merit any favor with God. In fact, if there's anything that you could do by your own good works, then Jesus Christ died in vain. Now, concerning the origin of purgatory, nobody really knows the origin of purgatory. Uh, Catholics like to blame it on the Jews, if you would, because it's in some early Judaic writings, but nobody really understands where it's from. And any proof texts that are used inside of the Bible are fully taken out of context. There's a, uh, a slight verse that taken out of uh, Maccabees that they try to hold on to, but it's really, there's no biblical origin. But it does make sense from a worldly standpoint, from a manly standpoint, because we want to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, and everything within us wants to say that I can do this because we teach that to our kids our whole lives try better work harder do more well that's what religion is you see religion is man's attempt to get to God but Jesus Christ was God's attempt to get to man and there's nothing we can do to earn favor with God because grace is unmerited favor to the infinitely ill deserving so purgatory has no place so indulgences would have grown out of purgatory yes mm -hmm. yeah that's how the that's how the Catholic Church funded uh, much of its uh, building and uh, and uh, much of the wars that it was involved in, you know, uh, pre-Reformation. Uh, so how would you summarize what an indulgence is? Indulgence is uh, giving money to the church in order to either shorten your time in purgatory or buy a loved one's way out, mm. uh, none of which has any scriptural basis whatsoever. 
It's a lie. Yeah, you know, the verse that they would use for that would be that the laborer is worthy of his wage. You know, and the, uh, the actual amount of money is, equals to be about $5, and it's given directly to the priest. And he's not allowed to take more than uh, uh, one payment a day, if you would, for that uh, indulgence, for that prayer on your behalf to the loved ones. Uh, so they're not necessarily getting rich off that, but they are in other areas. So Yeah, okay. All right, uh, next one. First, uh, first off, love the show. Keep it going. What did he say? First off, love the show. Keep it going. I just liked hearing that twice. First off, love the show. <laughs> keep it going. Yes. Uh, I bought the School of Biblical Evangelism lessons book, and I just recently picked up my first set of tracks. Wow. So I'm getting ready to go out and spread the gospel, other than relationally, uh, for the first time in my life. Well done. Uh, I've been idle with my faith for too long. Thank you guys for the encouragement and wisdom. Question. Have any of you uh, at the Living Waters team ever been approached by someone else who was evangelizing and simply didn't know you guys? Have you ever been approached? Has anyone ever approached you with a good person test? If so, what was your response? Ray? I haven't been approached. I've been a Christian for 23 years. I'm hearing constantly about all the churches in my community and around the world that are doing outreach and sharing the gospel through their lives. And no one has ever walked up to me and engaged me in spiritual conversation. And it's not because I'm angry. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. Of course. Mark? Yeah, you know, I've actually been approached uh, quite a few times. And uh, in the beginning, what I would do is I'd play the devil's advocate, if you would. I would try to pull out what seems to be some discrepancies or contradictions. And then I would try to go against what they have to say. And then I would let them off the hook. You'd mess with them. Um, I would. I would mess with them. I, nothing's changed So over that the has years. actually happened to you. Christians have yeah, come up to you. Yeah, you know, it has. In <coughs> fact, it's, it's also happened at the academy when we'd go out and we'd hit the streets. Um, people would go up to me and try to witness to in me. In the academy. In the academy that Those we, that we have. Okay. Which is weird because the day before I just finished teaching them, <laughs> you'd think that they were looking at my face when I was teaching. But They're probably so terrified they glazed over in the eyes or something. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I should, uh, should qualify what I said with this. It, um, no Christian has ever tried to engage me in spiritual conversation. Mm. Um, I have cultists, uh, yeah. International Church of Christ, that engage me on uh, college campuses. Uh, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses will come to my door, uh, but apparently most Christians don't care enough about the truth to do what the cults are willing to do for a lie. Yeah. I, I just want to say something. We've been tied up with 180 for about six months, and Mark hasn't been doing the um, Living Waters University, University, University. clips. Yeah. And yesterday we did nine. Kirk introduced them. And one of them I've been wanting to get to for ages, and it was where I went up to an obvious non-Christian. He had tattoos all over his cheeks, on his forehead, on his lips, on his chin, ears. Everything was tattooed to earrings. And he had a, a steel bone through his nose running about two inches across like that. Um, anyway, he turned out to be a Christian. A genuine Christian who read the word daily, loved the Lord, and he didn't know how to witness. And he, he just threw me because he had all the answers. And there he was with a bone <laughs> through his nose, a steel bone through his nose. And I said, well, how would you share your, 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 you know, how do you share the gospel? And he was off. And so I said, let me witness to you how I do, like biblically. And he was so grateful. Oh, great. He said, thank it's you wonderful. very much. So it's a, it's a kind of a unique witnessing clip that's coming up when we start the Loving Water University's uh, clips again. Excellent. And if you want to learn how to share your faith in just a few hours, join us uh, September 17th for the Transformed Conference up in Littleton, Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, the conference is from 1230 to 430. Uh, the whole Living Waters team will be up there. In fact, uh, the folks who are organizing the event will be taking participants out to the streets out there in the South Denver area immediately following the conference. So um, to the ball game, They're going out to the uh, Colorado Rockies game. Uh, and uh, that ought to be a great opportunity to immediately, immediately apply the things that you learn during the conference. We're also going to premiere 180 for the uh, folks in Colorado. And Easy reminded me of something this morning, Ray. Mm. Need to get hold of the church to make sure they're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you're watching from uh, uh, Calvary Chapel, South Denver, on the box of livingwaters.com, no. Of course, we'll make personal contact. And Definitely. And we'll point them to Golden Hills community that loved. Uh, yes, they were nervous at first, and they, they, were, they, they were. just absolutely loved it. Yeah. Uh, this week's giveaways, first prize, the Evidence Bible, hardcover edition, second prize, World Religions in a Nutshell by Ray Comfort, and uh, third prize, five packs of our trillion-dollar bills. And uh, email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com with your full name, your full address, and your zip code, please. Enter only once, 
and we will announce the winter, winners on Monday. Monday is going to be uh, winters. You got that. You didn't. You couldn't even let it go. No, I, I let, it, let go. it go. I let it go. I was going to say you see through that. You got framed and all this sort of stuff. But I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just let it go. Windows. You've been on your computer again, haven't you? That's what it was. <laughs> I've been on Windows all day <laughs> yeah. long. Yeah. Uh, Monday's going to be a real, uh, real. <laughs> Excuse me. It's we're be a go really big show. We're leaving as we came in. Yeah, Monday. Firstly, we come in like clowns and go into suicide stay serious for a minute and then go back. Oh, it's a great time. Uh, Monday, uh, we're going to be releasing the trailer, the official trailer. Oh, yeah. 180 that uh, Mark and, and the rest of the team have been working so hard on. And we're also going to be uh, unveiling the. Uh, primary website for the movie, for mm. the documentary. And we've got a special guest on Monday That's sitting right. in, in Mark's in seat. Mark's which so we're going to give Mark the week. day off, unless he chooses to step in front of the camera. He's always welcome. <laughs> um, Alan Pearson, Director of Donor Relations and Development here at Living Waters. No, we were going to tease with that one. Oh. A well, I'm not going to tell you what he's talking about. <laughs> That's so. good. Yeah. Hey, we got a bit. Are any questions coming out of the chat room uh, today over there in Studio B in the Dean's office? Well, people are wondering when we are going to start posting the weekly witnessing clips that well, Ray just brought up. And okay. I think it's going to be not this Monday, but the following Tuesday, the day after Labor Day. That's I well put. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That is too. And then they'll be coming up once a week? Is that how Once a week, once yes. A week yeah, we're back into I think the first one we should do is the guy with the bone through his nose. Mark, did I spit on you? Yeah, no. that's great. That's a great did idea. Did I spit on you? No. Okay. He, he, you know, he's an interesting character, like you, like you said. Uh, he, he doesn't look to be the typical Christian, and then when you go talking to him, boy, he's got a gentle spirit, doesn't yeah. he, about him? Very yeah. likable. And we, we addressed the bone through the nose thing, and it was interesting. Looks like very thick nasal here. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? So I was trying to look to see if I had any really thick nasal hair. <laughs> you know, there, there were questions in there, but, uh, but I, we, okay. All I right. had missed well, them. We, we only got 19 seconds, and we're excited. Uh, it's 16. 16, 15, actually, maybe not even 14. We're going to go upstairs, and we're going to party with Lisa and have a wonderful Mexican lunch. <laughs> you are, we're live, Mark. Stuff like that doesn't make me laugh anymore. Hope you have a great weekend. Hey, for our brothers and sisters on the East Coast, Saturday would probably be the best day to do evangelism because I hear you're going to get wet and windy come Sunday when that hurricane rolls in. So That's be careful. Listen to the authorities. Get out of Dodge if they tell you to get out. But share the gospel with folks who are glad to come on it. Who are glad to it. So Monday, be encouraged, drinking, and unafraid. Living Waters presents On the Box.